Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're actually going to continue our series on discrete math, and we're going to talk about logical equivalences. So we were talking quite a bit last time about these things called propositions and things of that nature. So logical equivalences are basically we have two different expressions that are logically equivalent to each other. So um, an easy one to see is suppose we had two propositions P and Q. So these are propositions. Again, propositions, remember, is either true or false. Then if I write P or Q, this is logically equivalent to uh, flipping them around. So if I have P or Q, that's the same thing as Q or P. Okay, so the order doesn't matter. And the way that we're going to write equivalent is with these uh, this triple equal sign. Well, I guess it's a one and a half equal sign. But So this means logically equivalent. It may not be the exact same statement, especially if you say it out loud. But in terms of the valuation that it gets, either true or false, it always coincides uh, in however you set P or Q. And if I switch this to be and on both sides, we get exactly the same thing. But one thing we did see last time is that if I have P implies Q, this is not logically equivalent to Q implies P. So these two statements are not logically equivalent. And uh, you can find out what values of Q and P co that you need in order to show that they're not uh, equivalent. So logically equivalent, you can think of as among all the possible valuations of P and Q, the resulting value for both of the two expressions is identical. Okay, so one thing that you can uh, see pretty clearly is if I have P or not P, to be or not to P, uh, no matter what happens, whether P is true or false, one of these two is in fact true. So this is actually logically equivalent to true, because no matter what I do, these two, the or of true and false is true. The or of true, false is true. And uh, same thing if I, or similar thing, if I do and of P and not P, well here one of the two is false. I don't know which one, but one of the two is always false. So anything and false, or the other way around, is always going to result in false. So, so this is going to be logically equivalent to false. So these are actually pretty simple, but let's actually uh, start working with more complicated ones. So you may remember from math that if we have an expression that looks like this, where we have a times b plus c, then we can distribute the a over the b and the c. So what we would get is a times b plus a times c. So we can distribute the a across b and c, and we just add them as a result. So we can actually do something really similar with uh, propositions. So suppose that we had an expression that looks like P uh, or Q and R. If this was an or on the inside, it would just be P or Q or R, it doesn't matter. But here, the and is on the inside. So what can we actually do? So you can actually think of this um, kind of like multiplication, but not exactly. So for logic statements like this, it turns out that we can distribute the or across each of the things uh, of the other propositions, and the and is going to be in the middle of the two. So what this is going to be equivalent to is P or Q and P or R. So let's actually uh, think about this. So if P is true, uh, we're trust, let's just try to figure out whether this is reasonable um, with, with uh, what we know. So if P is true, then this whole left side is true because there's an or here. So then 
well, is this guy true? Well, there's a P in both of the two pieces, and they're, they're involved in an or, and so therefore true and true is true, of course. So now suppose that um, P is false, then that means that this guy on the left side is true only when Q and R are both true. Well, if P is false, then on the right side here, then Q has to be true for this part to be true, and R has to be true for this one to be true. And the whole thing is true if only if both of the two pieces are true. We usually call these uh, clauses. So, well, we haven't actually talked about uh, that yet, but uh, these are what are called clauses. Uh, so, it's only true if both clauses are true. Okay. Um, so, let's talk about some more. Um, actually, there's one more here. What if I ha had the exact opposite effect? I had P and Q or R, then it works exactly the same way. You have P and Q or P and R. So we're distributing the and across the Q and the R here. So how can we be sure this is right? Well, if P is false, then this whole left side is false. And so let's see, well, if P is false, this guy is false. And if P is false, this one's false. False or false is obviously false. If P is true, then um, at least one of the two Q and R must be true. Well, if P is true, then this guy is true only if Q is, and this guy is true only if R is. So then we have reduced this right side to be Q or R, which is the same as what the left side is. Cool. So now let's talk about introducing negation. So we know that um, putting a not in front of a proposition is going to negate whatever value it had. So if it was true, it's false now. And if it was false before, it is true now. Um, so some equivalents you can see is if I put a not in front of another not, then that's going to first reverse the value and then reverse it back because there are only two possible values. So this is logically equivalent to the original one. Okay, so if you negate something twice, you get the original back. Okay, so what if I did not P or Q? So, so let's actually think about what this would say. So this, without the not, this is only false if P and Q are both false. So the whole thing, it should be true if and only if P and Q are both false, okay? So it should be true only when P and Q are both false, okay? So what that equates to is distributing the not over the, the or here. So it's P, not P or not Q, okay? Actually, no, 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 I have it backwards. Uh, it's and here. That was my mistake. It is and. So why can we actually be sure of this? So let's think. If P and Q, so if one of these two is true, one of the two is true, then the whole thing on the left side is false. So let's just assume that one of the two is true. Then that means that, let's just say P is true because it's symmetric both ways. If P is true, then not P is obviously false then false and whatever is false. Now let's suppose that both of them are false. Then that means that this whole thing on the left side is true, but if both of them are false on this side, then the negations of both of them are also false, uh, are true, sorry. True and this guy's true. So true and true is in fact true. Okay, so then if we do a similar thing, with and, you can actually show and uh, put down into the comments how you think you would derive this. You would get something very similar. You would get not P or not Q. So when you have a negation on something or something or something and something, then the, the operator flips. So if it was and before, it's gonna be or now. And if it was or before, it's going to be and now. 
So it flips uh, what it was. So the negation actually negates, quote unquote, the operator, either or or and, and it switches between the two. Okay, uh, what about um, the, the implication one? Okay, so what does this mean? So this guy is false only when P is true and Q is false. Okay, so the whole thing should be true only when P is true, uh, yeah, should only be true only when P is true and Q is false. So that actually tells us that P has to be true and uh, Q has to be false. And of course, there are other ways you can write this because of this double negation here. But this is one way to write it. So if if there's if it's any way other than P being true and Q being false over here, then if Q is true, this guy is false. And if P is false, <laughs> this guy is obviously false. So one of the two sides is false, and then the whole thing is false. Okay, so that was a quick introduction into logical equivalences. These are used all the time in order to make propositions in, in other things like them a lot easier to understand by trying to make them a lot simpler in terms of formulating them in terms of some other identity or uh, values that we know. So by converting them into some other form that is equivalent, even though it's not exactly identical to the original, it is logically identical, which is all that we really need because all we're talking about are propositions. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave a comment down below if you have any other interesting thoughts about uh, logical equivalences or propositions or logic or anything like that. As always, there are many links down in the video description for you to support this channel. You can like and subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps us out. There are many other links in the description for contributing, such as our Patreon or donation, which appears on our streams. And an announcement I just made um, uh, yesterday, the day before I'm recording this, is um, there's a schedule posted. So check the channel banner for the actual post, what videos are going to be posted on what days. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.